so good morning now we'll continue with the subdivisions of cerebellum so now you should be familiar with two subdivisions of cerebellum one is anatomical subdivision and the other is morphological subdivision so just look at that picture to appreciate anatomical subdivision so anatomically cerebellum is being divided into three parts an anterior lobe a posterior lobe and a floculo nodular lobe so look at that figure you are appreciating the red colored part that is the anterior lobe the green colored part that is the posterior lobe and the blue colored part is the floculo nodular lobe so these are the three lobes anterior posterior and floculo nodular lobe so in some textbooks they say this posterior lobe is also denoted as middle lobe fine so now you find two fissures separating these three lobes so now can i ask you something name the fissure which separates the anterior from posterior lobe that is fissura prima or otherwise termed as primary fissure name the fissure which separates the floculo nodular lobe from the posterior lobe and that is postero lateral fissures so two fissures dividing the cerebellum into anterior lobe posterior lobe and floculo nodular lobe so read that anterior lobe is anterior to fissura prima posterior lobe will lie between fissura prima and postero lateral fissure and floculo nodular lobe lies on the inferior surface and in front of postero lateral fissure so now you are familiar with the first classification anatomical subdivision before going into the details of morphological classification you should know something more about each so now in the center concentrate on the figure in the center you are seeing vermis starting from lingula down till nodule are you seeing that that is the vermis and on either side of the vermis you are seeing the two cerebellar hemispheres so now what we do is we subdivide the vermis into still smaller areas and name them separately we also subdivide the cerebellar hemispheres into still smaller areas and we name them accordingly just concentrate on that first starting with vermis from above downwards first you get lingula then you get cl are you seeing that that is a central lobule then culmen marked as c then d for decli folium tuber pyramid and ovula and finally you get the nodule so these are the subdivisions of vermis starting from above lingula culmen cl culmen so not culmen central lobule then you get culmen decli folium tuber pyramid ovula and finally the nodule now we come to the parts of the cerebellar hemispheres so remember lingula has got no lateral extensions this starting from the central lobule so from central lobule down the lateral projections are named as ala quadrangular lobule lobulus simplex superior semilunar lobule inferior semilunar lobule biventral lobule tonsil and finally floculus so these are the parts of a cerebellar hemisphere starting from above ala quadrangular lobule marked as ql ls is for lobulus simplex ssl is for superior semilunar lobule isl inferior semilunar lobule bl biventral lobule tonsil and finally the floculus so these are the subdivisions of cerebellar hemispheres and vermis so now with now with that we have finished the anatomical subdivisions so anterior lobe posterior lobe 
flocculo nodular lobe divided by fissure of prima posterolateral fissure and you know the subdivisions of berm is and cerebellar hemispheres now we are proceeding on towards the second subdivision that is a morphological subdivision so morphological subdivision cerebellum is divided into three one is archicerebellum two is paleocerebellum and three is neocerebellum so archicerebellum paleocerebellum and neocerebellum just concentrate on that figure in that figure you are seeing certain part is marked as gray are you seeing that that is the archicerebellum so lingula plus the flocculo nodular lobe is termed as archicerebellum look at that figure lingula plus the flocculo nodular lobe is marked or is designated as archicerebellum so you concentrate on that word archicerebellum so arche means it's the oldest the oldest one during the process of evolution the first part that usually develops in fishes that is the archicerebellum so the initial function or the most important function that was assigned was equilibrium so archicerebellum is very closely related to equilibrium the maintenance of equilibrium if it is connected to maintenance of equilibrium it should have connection with vestibular nucleus fine so archicerebellum is also termed as vestibulocerebellum okay so first cerebellum archicerebellum second look at that figure and you see certain parts are marked as uh, pink are you seeing that so what are those parts marked as pink they are those included under the next part paleocerebellum so in paleocerebellum you have got the whole of anterior lobe except lingula plus pyramid and ovula so this much together forms the next cerebellum termed as paleocerebellum the other function of this paleocerebellum or the function of the paleocerebellum is it helps in the maintenance of posture of limb muscles posture of trunk muscle was done by archicerebellum along with equilibrium and this paleocerebellum will have a important function in the maintenance of not posture maintenance of posture of limbs and it has large number of fibers coming from spinal cord to give the informations and hence you call this cerebellum as spinocerebellum so paleocerebellum otherwise termed as spinocerebellum what are the parts included under paleo the anterior lobe except lingula plus pyramid plus ovula now concentrate on the last part neocerebellum all those things marked as yellow so what are those things whole of the posterior lobe except pyramid and ovula is marked as or is designated as neocerebellum so neo means newest the newest formed and the main function you assigned for this neocerebellum that is assigned for neocerebellum is skillful coordination of movements performance of skillful movements all those are made possible by neocerebellum and the other name of neocerebellum is pontocerebellum so read that archicerebellum was the oldest flocculo nodular lobe plus lingula remember that figure flocculo nodular lobe plus lingula archicerebellum and the main function is the maintenance of equilibrium plus the tone and posture of trunk muscles not limb muscles it is trunk muscles tone and posture of limb muscle is by the next cerebellum that is paleocerebellum and this archicerebellum has got a connection with vestibular nucleus for equilibrium and hence termed as vestibulocerebellum paleocerebellum read that anterior lobe except lingula plus pyramid and ovula forms paleocerebellum and it is concerned with tone posture and crude movements of limbs
and it is otherwise termed as spinocerebellum. Then the last one, neocerebellum. Neo means it's the most recent one. And whole of the posterior lobe except pyramid and uvula of inferior vermis. And the main function is smooth performance of skilled voluntary movements. And the other name of neocerebellum is pontocerebellum. So with that we finish the two classification. One is anatomical subdivision. Second one is morphological. Anatomical into three lobes. Anterior lobe, posterior lobe, flocculonodular lobe. Morphologically divided into three. Name them. One is archicerebellum. Two, paleocerebellum. Three, neocerebellum. So with that I finish the topic today. And I will continue the next part of cerebellum later. Thank you.